Hey guys, CT is a great exam because there are loads of standard full mark questions that come up. They come up over and over again and the mark schemes are the same. So what I've made for you are some more flashcards, but you've requested it so often that I've actually made you the flashcards. You can go to my website and you can print them off or you can make your own flashcards from this video or you can just watch this video over and over again. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you to get as many marks in the exam as you can. So here are the bits, some of the bits, not all the bits, that you need to learn in flashcard formats. Describe how metal conducts electricity. In a metal, positive ions are sitting in a sea of free delocalized electrons. These electrons can move freely and this allows electricity to be conducted. Describe the structure of an alloy. Alloys are hard, they have different sized atoms which disrupt the layers, so they have distorted layers. These layers cannot slide and because they cannot slide it means they are hard. Describe and explain the bonding in graphite. Graphite only makes three carbon-carbon bonds, which means it is in a layer. There is a spare electron which floats between these layers, and because it floats between these layers, it can conduct electricity. Because of the presence of layers, graphite is soft. Describe the structure and bonding in a thermosoftening polymer. In the thermosoftening polymer, the chains will loose, they are not held together, which means it will soften, it will melt when heated. Describe the bonding in an ionic compound. Now, here I've given you quite specific instructions about um, making it relevant to the exam question. But your metal is going to lose electrons, it is going to become a positive ion. Your non-metal is going to gain electrons, it's going to become a negative ion. They both have full outer shells and then give the formula of the compound that's going to be made. Use an example to describe the properties of a simple covalence compound. So the examples you need to know are oxygen, water, carbon dioxide, uh, methane, chlorine gas, uh, hydrochloric acid as well, hydrogen gas will also come up. Um, they have low boiling and melting points and they do not conduct electricity. Describe the properties of an ionic compound. They have high melting and boiling points and they only conduct electricity when they are molten or dissolved. Not when they are solid because when they are solid the ions are not free to move around. Describe the bonding in a giant covalent compound. It has a large structure, it has strong bonds, and it has no free ions. And the no free ions means it is not going to conduct electricity. Describe the structure of pure metal. Pure metals are soft because the atoms are arranged in layers, and these layers can slide over each other. The examiners love that question. What is the difference between diamond and graphite? Both of them are made from carbon, but diamond makes four carbon-carbon bonds and graphite makes three carbon-carbon bonds. Describe the structure in bonding in a thermosetting polymer. Because in a thermosetting polymer, the polymer chains are held together by crosslinks, which means it is going to burn. Describe the bonding in a simple covalence compound. They have weak intermolecular bonds, which doesn't require much energy to break them, so they're going to have a low boiling and melting point. And then, what is the difference between ionic and covalent bonding? Ionic bonding is between a metal and a non-metal. Ionic bonding is the transfer of electrons. Covalent bonding is between two non-metals, and it is the sharing of electrons. So, you need to learn those guys, you can either go over to my website, print the flashcards that I've made for you off, make your own flashcards, or just watch this video over and over and over again. You'll see, these are not the most sophisticated flashcards in the world, but if you want to save time, um, and a bit of money, you don't have to buy your own flashcards, then these are going to be a really good option for you. I am making loads of these as quickly as I can, so I'm going to do your units for physics, um, I'm also going to do your equations for maths as well. They're over my website under flashcards, strangely enough.